1968, Calvin Klein took a load of $10,000 from his friend and started a small coat shop that would later become Calvin Klein Inc., the brand which is one of the leading brands today. In this video, we'll see how Calvin Klein made his namesake brand a household name. Klein decided to start his own business using his expertise and his knowledge of urban fashion in New York City. Von Wick Teller's merchandiser was blown away by Klein's collection when he stopped by his showroom. Ginsburg had a key role in introducing Klein to the New York fashion elite, which led to his designs being featured frequently in publications like Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. In the 1990s, the company ran into serious financial trouble. Klein and Schwartz were able to sell their company to Philips Van Hughes Incorporation for $430 million in cash and stock in 2003. Tom Hittnaus, the first male underwear model for Klein, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, Antonio Sabato Jr., Zoe Saldana, Dijiman Honso, Mekad Brooks, Justin Bieber, Kendall Jenner, Travis Fimmel, Natalia Vodianova, Carolyn Murphy, Eva Mendez, and FKA Twigs have all been featured in Calvin Klein ad campaigns. In 1995, Klein was criticized for his controversial ads. After being chastised by former President Bill Clinton, Klein was the youngest designer of ready-to-wear outfits ever to be inducted into the Cody Hall of Fame, and his business management helped him to make his company one of the largest fashion houses today. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinary successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Calvin Richard Klein was born to a Jewish family in the Bronx, New York City on November 19, 1942. His Hungarian immigrant father ran a grocery store in Harlem, and his mother was a homemaker who took great pleasure in spending time at her mother's tailoring shop, which significantly influenced Klein's later career. He was an ambitious youngster who began creating fashion designs well before his adolescence. Growing up, Klein attended Isabel Rooney Middle School 80. He went to the High School of Art and Design in Manhattan and enrolled in the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, but he never completed his education there. Instead, he was awarded an honorary doctorate in the field in 2003. In 1962, Klein began training as an apprentice at Dan Milstein, a traditional line cloak and suit manufacturer in New York City. He then spent the next five years as a designer at various other establishments in the city. Klein decided to start his own business using his expertise and his knowledge of urban fashion in New York City. In 1968, with some financial backing from a childhood friend named Barry Schwartz, he commissioned a seamstress to make a limited selection of coats and dresses. Bonwit Teller's merchandiser was blown away by Klein's collection when he stopped by his showroom. The department store invested in the products and showcased them in eight different storefronts. After meeting with the fashion editor, Baron de Gunsberg, Klein was taken under his wing and given the guidance he needed to become successful. Gunsberg had a key role in introducing Klein to the New York fashion elite, which led to his designs being featured frequently in publications like Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. Klein's first show at New York Fashion Week earned him accolades and dubbed him the next Ives St. Laurent for its minimalist aesthetic. In 1974, Klein debuted his signature skin-tight jeans, driving them to popularity with a series of suggestive advertisements. One such ad featured Brooke Shields lying provocatively and saying, Nothing comes between me and my Calvins, in a flirtatious tone. In 1982, he introduced a line of stylish underwear bearing his brand name. From there, he progressed to swimwear, accessories, hosiery, and eyewear. Later in the 80s, Klein expanded into the perfume industry, releasing the scents Obsession and Eternity in the 1990s. At the beginning of the 90s, he launched a diffusion line under the name CK, and then he moved on to create a homeware company. In the 1990s, the company ran into serious financial trouble, but received a bailout from a friend, David Giffen. In 2000, Calvin Klein Inc. sued its licensee, Warnaco Group, for trademark infringement and violation of contractual obligations. Both parties reached an amicable resolution outside of court. As a result of their extensive network of licensing partnerships, Klein and Schwartz were able to sell their company to Philips Van Hughes Incorporation in 2003 for $430 million in cash and stock in addition to a limited royalty pact. He retired the following year and kept a quiet profile afterward. But in 2017, he released Calvin Klein, an autobiographical look at his career, complete with images and personal experiences. Since 2016, Raph Simons has been Calvin Klein's chief creative officer and has been responsible for overseeing all innovative operations across the entire company. Christy Turlington was chosen for the Eternity Fragrance campaign, designed to signify stability and family, and other advertising that demonstrated a sense of grace, and model Kate Moss became a recurring figure in a series of ads for Klein, despite encountering controversy for her thinness at the time and the sensuality of the pictures. Klein's underwear ads with the then-rapper and actor Mark Wahlberg also credited the popularizing of the concept of male beefcake. 
Tom Hittnaus, the first male underwear model for Klein, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, Antonio Sabato Jr., Zoe Saldana, Dijiman Honso, Mikhad Brooks, Justin Bieber, Kendall Jenner, Travis Mel, Natalia Vodianova, Carolyn Murphy, Eva Mendez, and FKA Twigs have all been featured in Calvin Klein ad campaigns. The designers collaborated with luminary photographers such as Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, Stephen Klein, Herb Ritz, Mario Testino, and Bruce Weaver. In 1995, Klein was criticized for his controversial ads. After being chastised by former President Bill Clinton, Calvin Klein withdrew parts of the advertisements, which incited anti-pornography activists. The US Justice Department also started an investigation to find out how old his models were. In 2013, Klein admitted that looking back, he may have overdone the effort. Despite the backlash and dislike, Klein has continued to promote advertising that, according to some, induces calm, classical sensuality and an appreciation of the body. Klein was the youngest designer of ready-to-wear outfits ever to be inducted into the Cody Hall of Fame, and the first designer to win three consecutive Cody Awards for women's wear from 1973 to 75. His design ethos is based on creating simple, comfortable, but stylish clothes, but with nothing over scale or extreme, as he put it. His clothing was well received by consumers in the United States and others because it was reasonably pricey, classic, elegant, and easy to wear. His accomplishments were symbolic of not only the success of his brand of classical styling, but also the advancement of the American fashion industry. In 1981, 83, and 93, he won an award from the Council of Fashion Designers of America. According to the international best dress list, Klein was one of the most stylish people in the world in 1983. Among Times Magazine's ranking of the 25 most influential Americans from 1996, he ranked number 14. Calvin Klein is largely distributed and giving back to society, and the details of his philanthropy are not precisely clear. However, the following organizations have received donations from Calvin Klein. AIDS Life, American Foundation for AIDS Research, Elephant Family, Habitat for Humanity, and Y Class. Overall, he's known to support initiatives bordering on AIDS and HIV, animals, disaster aid, health, homelessness, and other causes. Calvin Klein was not just a good fashion designer, he also had business acumen. His business management helped him to make his company one of the largest fashion houses today. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.